same broadcaster cloud does a lot of audio processing in the background to give your station that professional sound. There's however a lot of settings you can adjust to make it perfect for your specific needs. So in this video today we'll cover some of the basics of the audio processing and what you can adjust to make your station sound the best. The first thing to know is that as soon as you've uploaded a track, that track is analyzed and we um, figure out what the decibels levels are at the start and end of the track. And we also um, normalize the track using the EBU R128 standard and we normalize it to a level of minus 18 LUFS. Now all of that really means is that we're taking all the files uploaded into the system and making their volume level consistent so that they all have pretty much the same volume level. So even if some content were recorded much louder than other content, on average they will have the same volume level. And that gives the station a much more consistent and better sound. Now let's have a look at some of the settings you can adjust. Um, we go down to the settings tab and then the audio settings. And the first thing to look at is trim silence. Trimming silence will detect near silence at the beginning or end of a track and then remove that from a track. This makes transition sound a lot better, especially if using the cross function. Um, some content have a little bit of a noisy background, especially if it wasn't recorded in a proper studio. You may have to adjust your volume or your dB level of detection to minus 40 or even minus 30 decibel to properly strip out more noisy kind of near silent scenarios. But the setting of minus 50 works for most commercially produced content. The next setting you can adjust is the cross setting, also sometimes called cross fading or cross mixing. This allows two tracks to play at the same time, basically while the one track is ending, another track starts before the first track has ended and they both play for a short period of time. You can adjust the intersect point, um, you see I adjusted mine to minus 15 decibels and it crosses up at about that point. If I lower the decibel level, I think the default is minus 30, you'll see it only has a short cross period. So you can adjust this to meet the style of music um, and the style you prefer. And you can also set the maximum cross duration because you do get tracks with a very long fade out or fade in and you don't want the cross maybe of 10 seconds that won't sound too great so you can limit the maximum cross duration as well as a safety of course there's certain types of content where cross just simply doesn't sound great and you can simply disable the cross and you can see here on the graph that the two tracks no longer cross each other but let's re-enable that and then next we look at the fade out fade in so as you can see here I can disable the fade out or I can re-enable it, I can set the duration of the fade and I can also change the curve of the fade. I can change it into a straight line, linear, um, kind of a sinus curve, logarithmic or exponential. So this gives you some flexibility on how the fade sounds. And you can do this both for the fade in and the fade out. The last setting you can adjust is do not cross or fade content less than 70 seconds in duration. Now this is useful because some content like promos, sweepers and commercials, you really don't want them to cross or fade just because they're so short and a lot of times commercials um, have a start and end very abruptly. So fading kind of loses some of the content. So you can set this to, to by default not fade short content or if you prefer to fade short content you can just set a value of zero and those content will also be faded. Um, you can also override all of these settings on a per track basis so the settings we've been uh, talking about in this video so far are global settings the kind of the default that's applied to tracks but you can also do this on a per track basis which we'll jump into next. 
So with any track, let's take this one and I open up the media item editor. You'll see there's a tab at the bottom here, audio settings, where I can go ahead and override most of the uh, audio settings available. So the first thing to notice is that the gray uh, part of the graph here indicates kind of a simulated track and the green one will be the actual audio curve of the audio and the red one will be the audio curve of the track ending. So the green is the beginning and the red one is the ending. So you can see here that if I disable the, cur the fade in, how the curve adjusts, and if I enable the fade, you can kind of see the fade in there. And if I increase the fade duration, you can see how that affects the whole graph. So this allows you to fine tune the fading and audio settings on a per track basis. Let's have a look at other settings. You can you can uh, adjust the gain of a track. What that means is because all tracks are normalized, sometimes you want some content to be slightly louder than other content. Uh, stations, for example, like to play commercials slightly louder so they uh, gather more attention. So you can maybe increase the decibel level of a track. You can see how that adjusts. Um, you can decide if you want to trim silence or not. So if this again was a commercial, you can say do not trim silence and do not cross. Or if the default setting was that, uh, you know, the short track shouldn't be crossed, or sh then you can enable that to force that to happen. So on a per track basis, you can override all the audio settings to get the exact sound that you need. As a final note, the best way to experience the audio adjustments you've made to the audio setting is to actually listen to your stream. Just note that when a track is already playing or queued to play next, it, the audio settings may still not be applied. You'll have to wait for one or two song transitions after that to experience the changes in settings. Also note that you can't use the embedded audio player to kind of preview the audio settings that you've adjusted. So if I click here on the embedded preview player, the audio I'll be getting won't reflect those settings. So really the only way you can experience your settings is to listen to the stream while the actual file is playing. Thank you for watching this video tutorial on the audio settings in Sam Broadcaster Cloud. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.